I believe in something, I'm not backing down. Amazing. And I don't like bullies. I really don't like bullies. On that note, what has it been like teaching biology in the last five, six, seven years? <laughs> Wait, do you know what happened to me? Oh, I, Carol, I do my research. I do you. I okay. Know I, I know that. What has it been like? Awesome. I have to say amazing because my under, I will start to cry because I had, have had, um, just the most wonderful undergraduates. Harvard is an interesting place, but there are, they do select students, not just for IQ, but sort of all around, um, personality, I guess. And they're just a lot of amazing kids and Nobody teaches what I teach because they're scared to do it because, you know, I teach about sex and gender and transitioning and intersex conditions and sex differences, you know, in addition to um, health issues and, you know, other stuff that um, doesn't have to do with sex, but people are afraid to do that. But if you do it in a way that's really open and honest and evidence based and you have a good dynamic in the classroom you can do anything and that's what i think i that's what i was doing i was good at it and um but you know i spoke the truth not in the classroom but when i spoke it on fox news do you guys have you don't have that right I, i've seen i've seen that no, okay, so we so don't have it here but i know so it's definitely a more conservative news outlet. And uh, yeah, people did not like at Harvard, didn't like that I went on there and said that there's two sexes, you know, just told the truth, right? And there's no, no one is going to, for they were trying basically to get me to say that sex is on a spectrum, spectrum is beautiful, people can change their sex, men or women, you know, et cetera. I'm not saying any of that. The, and the reason is a I don't not I'm a science educator and I'm here to describe how the world works to the best of my ability but B it doesn't help anyone so all of this distorting of the science which is happening now in in at Harvard at academic uh, in academic journals um, that is completely counterproductive in my view to actual social justice, which needs to be based in reality. Nobody's rights should hang on myths and untruths. So I'm pretty adamant about that. And um, yeah, so it's sucked just getting, having my colleagues in the sciences at Harvard. It's, it's very painful. I've been there for a long time. I had a lot of relationships and people are scared shitless. They are scared of losing their jobs. They're scared of being branded transphobic. Um, and they should be scared <laughs> because because they, you know, people are losing their jobs and all that stuff is happening. Um, so it's bad. It's bad. And everybody who can should be defending people who are trying to tell the truth, even if you disagree with them. You should support everybody's right to tell the truth as they see it, um, support academic freedom. And uh, all that stuff is really important to me because we're losing what we, you know, the best tools that we have to understand how the world works, which is clear language, open discussions about even when you disagree and even when you're offended and um, yeah, good research and teaching, which we're uh, losing. You seem to be both a brilliant academic and also someone, um, and I, I may be wrong with this. I, I, I don't know you personally, Crying. of course. What? Yeah, someone that that fe perhaps feels things uh, deeply. I would say, what was perhaps. the toll? Yeah, perhaps. What was the toll that that whole experience that did it take on you? Because it must have been tough. So I am going to get graphic about that toll. So anyone who I'm not, I don't like um, uh, trigger warnings because there's no evidence that they actually help. But I am going to talk about some difficult things. It was brutal just being attacked by people I have had long-term, again, lo really good long-term relationships with, or even just not being supported by Harvard, who I've, you know, an institution I've served and done a very good job for over 20 years. And I also got my PhD there. Um, 
that destroyed me for a while. And I had to take a semester off. I became severely depressed. And I, and this, I'm going to say this because it's very common in people who went through what I went through. And I didn't go through anything half as like so many people have had it much, much worse than I did. Kathleen Stock, I don't know if you know yeah. um, who she is in the UK, had it much, had a much longer, sort of more severe um situation. And many people do. Uh, but so I just became severely depressed and I had like really intense and constant suicidal ideation. Uh It's not, and I, this is, I found it actually fascinating, but disturbing at the same time because I didn't want to kill myself at all, but I had these, like this obsession with suicide and imagery and not really voices, but I did feel like I was kind of losing my shit a little bit there. And, um, my family was very supportive and I got therapy and I went on medication. It was scary, but it was also, it really was fascinating to sort of enter that world, which I had never been in. I'd been like sort of, you know, depressed before, but not like this and not with I that kind of intrusive thoughts. Um, so it's not to be taken lightly. It's easy to tell people to speak out and tell the truth, but the toll that people pay is emotionally it's you know in terms of mental health it's very high and in terms of um practical consideration if you you know need an income and you you know it's hard but the more i should just say the more people who do it the easier it gets because we now know that calling someone transphobic doesn't mean anything anymore it just means you have a certain set of political beliefs probably um that have nothing to do with even dislike of transgender people you know um 